What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Today I'm gonna to walk you through how I made this picture frame glue up jig out of Walnut and Paduke. This is your first time here. My name is Danny. I do mainly small shop, budget builds, tips and tricks, occasionally some tool reviews, things like that. If you're interested in those kind of videos, please consider subscribing. It helps me out a whole lot. So I just started off by digging through the pile, finding long enough pieces of walnut. Then I just started blanking everything out into 24 inch sections. After that, brought everything over to the joiner just to get a flat face and a flat edge before I brought everything over to the table saw. So this particular design is uh, pretty close to the design that David Picciuto came up with. He's over at a channel called Make Something. He's a real cool guy. I reached out to him just to get his permission on this project because it's a little bit different than his, but it's pretty similar. So I didn't want to step on any toes, thought I'd reach out to him and he said it was cool, which was very, very gracious of him. So shout out to David over there at Make Something. Go visit David at his channel and tell him Danny sent you. First step of the table saw was to get everything cut down to the right thickness. Then I started cutting off quarter inch strippies from that piece of Padu. Isn't this wood gorgeous? You ever used Paduk before? Looks like you've been eating Cheetos all over your shop. Next step was to cut everything down to the right width. I cut the walnut into one inch and half inch sections, and then I planned to sandwich the quarter inch strips of Paduk in between those. So the total width of these boards ended up being around an inch and three quarter by about a little under an inch in thickness. After all the cutting was done, I just needed to assemble and glue everything up. So you might be wondering, Danny, where's the intro? Where did it go? And the answer to that is, I friggin' dumped it. Nobody wants to watch me stand around and talk about crap that nobody cares about. So it's gone. This is the new format we're going with, so let me know if you're digging it. I'm trying to keep you all happy, you know what I'm saying? Just, just let me know. Let me know if you're happy. Let me know if you're digging it and if you're happy. Once everything's dry, I'm just using a scraper here to get the excess glue off. I'm using a number five plane here to get everything flushed up before I run it through the thickness planer. This has saved me a lot of time. If you haven't seen this video yet, I do an unboxing and kind of a light review of this particular planer. If you're interested in that at all, I'll link to that at the end of the video. Then just a rough sand to get everything flattened out. Then I just started cutting down the wider board into, I think it was five inch sections to give me my corner pieces. Then it was time to sharpen up. So instead of using a round over on all the corners, I just used a plane to whack them down a little bit. I believe it's called faceting. It makes everything look a little more geometric, which I personally like a bit more. And it actually saves me a little bit of time because I don't have to worry about removing burn marks from a router bit. Mm -hmm. 
Next, it was time to mark out the centers on each board, then draw out the 45 degree angles on each corner piece, and then finally marking out all the hole locations for the drill press. I don't know how many holes there were in total, but there was quite a bit. I stacked two pieces on top of each other to kind of help save some time. I'm using a brad tip bit here, which helped keep things a little cleaner. I set my stop on the drill press just before it punched out the back end of each piece so that all you saw was just the point of each bit coming through the back so that you knew the exact location of each hole when you flipped it over and then just make one more pass with the drill press on the back to help reduce the amount of blowout. Next step was just to cut up the 45 degree angles on each corner piece. And I used the bandsaw for this. There might actually be a better, more accurate method than this, maybe with like a table saw jig or something. But this is what I went with, and I did actually have to clean up some of the blade marks with a chisel afterwards. Once that was done, just did some more fastening on all of the corner pieces. Then just a final sand with 320 grit. This is where the project kind of differs a little bit with uh, David Picciuto. I chose to seal all of my pieces with shellac first before I put wax on them. I went with a little bit fancier design on this, so I want to make sure everything is good and protected. After that, just gave it a generous slathering of paste wax, just to help resist any wood glue that's gonna come into contact with the jig. Then the last thing to do before assembling was just to drill a partial depth three quarter inch hole in each longer piece, just so that the jig will lay flat on the surface once you've ran all the bolts through it. Time to slap it together. So these are just quarter 20 Phillips pan head screws with a nylock nut on the other side just to keep everything snugged up. You don't need to crank these down because you still want the jig to have a little bit of movement in the arms to be able to match the size to each frame. I think these screws are like three, four inches long. It really doesn't matter. Just get them long enough and whack off the excess. You've got an angle grinder that works great. Uh, hacksaw works too. But once that's done, just take a file and smooth out the top of each screw so you don't cut yourself while you're using the jig. Now that the jig is done, we need a friggin' picture frame. So I cranked one out in like 30 seconds, thanks to the magic of editing. But if you would like to see a full picture frame build, stick around and I'll link to one at the end of the video. So 
So even though we got wax on the jig, I took David Pachito's suggestion and just put some plastic underneath each corner. I don't want to muck up my fancy jig right away. Once everything's in place, I start my glue up and you'll see it's really simple. The corners will naturally square up. It makes everything so much quicker and easier. Probably gonna make a couple of these. As you can see, everything turned out real nice and accurate. This is exactly what I, what I needed. So hope you found that useful. If you did, give it a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, stick around because I've got a couple more for you coming right up. Make some cool stuff and I'll see you on the next one.